Well hello again and another warm welcome back to all of my loyal YouTube subscribers and thanks for returning once again as we check out more vintage dirt bike off-roaders here on Classic Dirt Bike TV. Now in this next featured video we're going to look at another old British classic that's a very popular choice with riders who race in the pre-1965 Scrambles events. So I do hope you'll hang around for the next few minutes as we check out yet another British classic machine in Peter Holland's Head's lovely 1958 SRM PSA. Now this featured bike is just one of the many classics in Peter's uh, collection of old vintage scrambles machines and this particular SRM BSA is Peter's preferred bike if he's racing in either a pre-65 or pre-1968 uh, classic scramble event. Now the bike is basically a 1958 uh, BSA uh, motorcycle which has an original uh, 1958 BSA frame although the rear swing arm is uh, actually taken from an old British made aerial uh, machine. Although I'm not sure why uh, Peter chose an aerial swing arm on this bike as opposed to a BSA item, although uh, I expect Peter had his own uh, reasons uh, for the swap. Now although at first glance this bike looks like it's just another old uh, British vintage racer and you'd be uh, partly right in that respect but uh, don't let this bike's looks fool you as uh, this is a very serious old race bike when Peter takes it uh, on the track. Now the SRM part of the bike's title refers to uh, Steve Roland McFarlane who set up SRM engineering services in the early uh, 1980s and uh, this uh, engineering company caters for all uh, the engineering services referring to these old uh, BSA twin cylinder motors. Now you can see on Peter's engine here that some of the cylinder barrel fins have been removed. Now some people say this is done to reduce weight although others say it's done to stop the mud sticking between the fins and then disrupting the cooling which of course makes the motor overheat but uh, for me personally uh, I think it's purely done as a weight saving issue. But then again having uh, done this modification to stop mud sticking between the fins is uh, also another uh, good talking point. Now the gearbox on Peter's SRM BSA is a 4 speed uh, Norton AMC unit which of course is a tried and tested gearbox and is used in a hundred other different classic motorcycles because it's normally a pretty robust uh, transmission system. Now the bike's footrests as you can see are bolted and uh, not welded to the bike's uh, chassis and this big twin cylinder motors crank has also had the roller bearing conversion done by uh, SRM. Now the bike has a single Amal concentric carburetor uh, fitted to feed this uh, very thirsty beastie with its fuel and uh, this fabricated metal exhaust guard has also been made to keep that pipe from uh, torching uh, Peter's uh, right hand leg. Now as you would expect these are not the easiest of bikes to kick over but uh, once you have it mastered it's uh, not too difficult to get this uh, old machine fired into life. Now uh, once this old uh, BSA is up and running I'm sure you don't need me to just uh, help you imagine just what this uh, bike sounds like through these twin exhaust pipes because uh, it's certainly a sweet symphony, uh, that's for sure. Now the fuel tank is your standard alloy BSA Victor tank which was made by Holtzworks who manufacture almost anything in alloy that you would need 
for a classic motorcycle such as this SRM BSA bike. Now the front forks on Peter's bike are a nice pair of heavy duty at Norton forks although Peter did tell me that these had a set of Italian Marzocchi internals inside. And of course, as you would expect, uh, these big uh, Norton uh, front forks are uh, robust enough to cope with anything uh, the big BSA would encounter on a vintage uh, Scrambles uh, racetrack. Now the front hub is not a BSA part, but is actually taken from a matchless uh, machine. Now the rear hub, once again, is a quite rare Horex hub from an early 1950s bikes and the main reason Peter chose this particular part was because it was fitted with a unique uh, Kush drive system. Now moving to the rear shocks on Peter's SRM, uh, these are a very high quality pair of works performance uh, classic units and as you would expect uh, these are much better and stronger than anything that would have been fitted to this old BSA back in 1958. Now most of the controls including the throttle gasser cables and levers are all basically your uh, standard scrambles racing parts which of course are easily uh, accessible from any off-road uh, motorcycle shop. Now with regards to the rest of the twin cylinder BSA motor, I'm not entirely sure if Peter has had any more modifications done to the top end of the engine as he didn't actually tell me at the time, although even in their standard trim these are still a formidable power plant as an old twin cylinder uh, scrambles bike. But one of the other modifications that Peter made to his BSA was to fit uh, this wire mesh grill down the front twin tubes of the frame. Now this of course was done to prevent uh, stones and other types of debris from damaging those uh, very precious uh, BSA crankcases. But for me personally there's definitely something about these old British classics with their steel frame chassis, uh, those big twin cylinder motors and the uh, copious use of lots of alloy for their side panels and uh, the front and rear mudguards. Because these uh, old vintage classics certainly have a character and charisma that you just don't get with a more modern bike that's uh, covered all over in uh, plastic. And this bike of Peter's has that old style character in absolute uh, bucket loads. Now it just so happens that uh, I've been lucky enough to see this bike in action on the track and uh, with Peter in the saddle this is a very quick old classic uh, pre-65 uh, race bike. Now one of the other parts on Peter's uh, engine is the ignition system is of course an interspan electronic system uh, whereby the ignition and HT unit is a self contained uh, system that you just charge up prior to a race event and uh, it then supplies all the power and sparks that you need to keep the motor running although uh, you don't forget to charge it up first or uh, you'll be left with a dead engine come race time. Now naturally and uh, as you would expect this is a quite heavy bike to throw around any kind of racetrack but of course back in 1958 uh, weight really wasn't a factor when you were riding these old big classics and if the bike was big and heavy you just grew bigger muscles to compensate. Now I do have to apologise and it's a bit of a pity really that uh, I wasn't around when Peter fired uh, this bike up as uh, these clips were taken very early in the morning and unfortunately uh, you're not allowed to start these big BSA twins at 6am on a Sunday uh, race day. But you have to admit, uh, without doubt, this is a superb uh, pre-1965 classic 
race bike and a very good example of what all of the legendary British Scrambles riders used to use when we used to watch those uh, BBC Grandstand Winter Scrambles events on TV back in the glory days of British motocross. So I do hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane and the little reminder of how these older race bikes looked like back in the day. So uh, that's Peter Hollinshead's 1958 SRM a BSA Twin. Now coming up soon on my channel we'll be looking at yet another British uh, BSA machine so uh, please continue to subscribe to my channel and uh, until then Please ride safe until we speak once more here on Classic Dirt Bike TV. This video was brought to you in association with Wealth Sport, the world's number one supplier for all your off road sports and leisure wear. Just visit their online website at wealthsport.com for more details.